Hey guys, it's me, Kevin's Videos, back again with another Top 10. Today, we're going to be listing off the Top 10 Game Controllers of all time. Game controllers have always been an integral part of gaming. From the beginning, we've always had game controllers, but when has anyone ever put them into a list to show what's really the best one? Today, we're going to do that. So let's get right in. I'm going to start off strong to show that I'm serious here and really set the bar by saying the PS1 controller is one of the best controllers of all time. It set the baseline for the entire series of PlayStation controllers by Sony. It was innovative, simple, ergonomic and intuitive. You got your D-pad right here, you got your X triangle, your O button, your box, and then you also have your start and select. But what I really think makes this good is that you have the L1 and R1, like on the SNES pad. But this has what the SNES pad doesn't. It has the L2 and the R2, so it beats the SNES pad out because of that. Number 9, we have the PS1 controller again, except this time it's the one with the thumbsticks on it. Now, think back to everything I said about the PS1 controller at number 10. Now, double that because this was even more innovative and intuitive because it included the left thumbstick. And now, people will probably be saying, No, the N64 had a thumbstick, and here's the thing. The PS1? It had a right thumbstick too! And to put the final nail in the coffin on the N64's hopes of making it on this list, the buttons could be clicked down, acting as an L3 and R3 button. Also, the N64 controller looks fucking stupid. Number 8. You probably guessed it, it's the PS2 controller. Now think back of what I said about the PS1 controller, how it was better than the first PS1 controller back at number 10. But you see, the guys at Sony are really good at making controllers, unlike Sega and Nintendo, and their third controllers didn't suck. Complete bum, like the fucking Dreamcast and the N64 ones. They're stupid. They, they added new features to the PS2 controller this time by making it so that the face buttons were throttled. And it's a shame that not a lot of games took advantage of this. It literally meant that pressing X harder actually did make you go faster. It was really cool, and that's why it's in at number 8. Number 7. Alright, let's throw a curveball here. We got the PS3 controller. Okay, okay now. Think back to everything I said about the PS2 controller. Now this time, they got even more innovative and intuitive and ergonomic by giving it a USB port and making it wireless, so now you don't get tangled up anymore. Now, honestly, that's some really forward thinking by Sony. They not only added wireless support to this gamepad, but then they also went ahead and added motion controls to the mix, and really shaking things up in the controller landscape forever. The PlayStation controller by Sony has slowly been added to bit by bit over the years, adding feature upon feature to it every generation to slowly make it the ultimate gaming peripheral. It's an absolute master of all trades that can do anything, you can even play it on your PC with it. Sony has truly set the industry standard for making a truly amazing experience for your hands and I, I doubt if it will ever be beat. That's why it's in at number 7. Number 6, the Xbox 360 controller. Alright, alright, so the Xbox 360 is probably going to be my favorite controllers of all time. The original Xbox controller by GameStop was pretty good, but I felt like it left a little to be desired. But then, the Xbox 360 came out and right away they told the old, tired formula of the PS3 controller and they said, hey, check this out. You made a whole new controller, different shape, fits amazing in your hand. Excellent buttons with a big D-pad that wasn't segmented anymore. Smooth rubber on the thumbsticks that didn't look like a dog's nose. And actually good face buttons. You got the A, B, X, and Y. Isn't that so much easier to say than X, triangle, O, and box? You had the bumper buttons, the LB and RB, which were really innovative at the time. And my favorite feature, the trigger buttons down, down there at the front of it. Never before had we actually felt like we were shooting a guy in the head while we were playing a video game. It was always just clicking the mouse or pressing a flat, spongy R2 button. But now, we have the throttled trigger buttons. I can only think Bill Gates himself 
led the charge on this, and it must have been where a lot of their money went on the first year of launch because it didn't go into the quality control, you know what I'm saying? Number 5. Now, what can beat the Xbox 360 controller? I'll tell you. It's something that the Xbox 360 controller and every controller before it completely just sucked at doing. We have the Guitar Hero Aerosmith controller for the PS2. Now, I know what you might be thinking. That the Wii U one is probably better, but I'd have to disagree. I know that the Wii has motion controls, but the Wii, you can't play it on the PC. That's why the PS2 one gets my vote, because I can hook it up to my PC, play all the songs I want. It's amazing. Yeah, so at number 4, we got the Hitbox controller by Hitbox Arcade. Now these controllers are going to run you over $200, especially if you live outside the US, so just do what I did and make your own. Trust me, if you get all the parts right, it's as easy as 1, 2, 3, and you'll notice right away the kind of edge it gives you in gameplay. A lot of people dislike the hitbox because they think it gives you an unfair advantage, but I'm not the one twiddling at a gay little joystick, so who's the real winner? Number 3 in all honesty, I'm gonna have to give it to the PS3 steering wheel by GameStop. It's a well-built, fully-featured steering wheel that you can plug right into your PS3 or PS4, but also into your PC. You got the cool little pedals at the bottom if you have room for them, and you can map it to play on other games if you really want to. It's an incredibly versatile piece of equipment, and for that reason, it goes in at number 3. Number 2, alright alright, time to get serious now. We're gonna go back in time for this one, because I know I started listing off a bunch of modern controllers, and I know that you guys want to include some old classics in there, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So this is my service for you guys, in here at number 2. The Competition Pro Series 2 controller for the Sega Mega Drive by Honeybee. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Why am I putting this above the steering wheel on the Xbox controller? Some of the best controllers of all time. Well, I'll tell you why right now. This controller has a single D-pad, a start button, and the ABC buttons. It has no thumbsticks to speak of, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter because back in the day you only had to move in like four directions anyway. Have you ever tried to play an NBA Jam with a 360 controller? It's stupid. But the reason I gotta pick this one over the original, much loved Mega Drive controller, is it has these three buttons over here over the ABC ones that activates a turbo mode. So instead of like killing your thumbs, pressing the attack over and over in Streets of Rage, you can just hold it down and go crazy, killing everyone. It makes the game so much easier and more enjoyable, trimming the fat of an otherwise great experience. For all those reasons, and much more, it goes in at number 2. Now, we're gonna take a quick break to hit you with some honorable mentions of controllers that couldn't make it into the countdown, but I still think deserve a shout out. I want to give a shout out to the Radicate GameStar for the PS1. I think this serves as a bridge between the PS1 and PS2 controller, sporting a cooler look and clickier buttons. I want to give a shout out to the Xbox 360 wired controller because you can plug it into your PC. I want to give a shout out to the Samsung Android phone because you can use it as a mouse pad for a gamepad if you really want to for some games and it works okay if you have nothing. And I want to give a shout out to the Sky TV remote. I would have put this in a probably like number 2 or even 1, it's that good because you can pick what you want to watch on it and then when you're done you can just go play some games right there on your TV in your living room using your TV remote, it was truly groundbreaking. Who can forget the Tom and Jerry game or Beehive Bedlam? These classics may be forgotten in time but I like to immortalize the Sky TV controller in this list as the final and most honorable mention. It's only disqualified because it's a TV remote, and its input delay is pretty bad because I had to beam the signal into space where the servers were, and then back to your TV, so I had like a second or two of lag when you pressed the turn on the Tom and Jerry game. But it's still pretty cool and groundbreaking, paved the way for the Wii mode, who took out the middleman of the space satellite eventually, and focused instead on bowling, instead of being able to see your favorite shows on demand. And now finally, we come to number one. And it is the PSP. Sony once again knocks it right out of the park with this beautifully designed controller. You have an amazing return of the segmented D-pad and the classic tried and tested X circle square and triangle buttons. They cut out the useless L2 and R2 and right thumbstick. 
You went right ahead and removed the boring useless ability to do motion controls and click down on the left thumbstick. Instead, they added a bunch of other buttons to the bottom right where you need them. They added the feature of USB only connectivity to improve the battery life and made it compatible using some third party software to work with like any emulator on your PC to experience the classic games you played as a kid in a whole other way. And the best part? Take your eyes off the screen and look down for a minute. There's another goddamn screen right there on your controller. A little switch on the top, click it, pop. Door opens, you can put some games in there. So you can just like beat someone's ass on Tekken 3 on your PC, look down, beat someone's ass on Tekken 5. No other gaming device offers this versatility and range, and I'm sure no device ever will for as long as we live. That's why I give the PSP a 4.5 star rating. That's going to be it for today, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment whatever you got to say about the video. Let me know what other controllers you would have added to the list. See you next time.